How are my brothers and sisters of First Gospel Church doing this stupendous Sunday morning? See, I knew I could count on Sister McGowan to answer me over there. Thank you, Sister McGowan. <clears throat> well, um, going to continue to pray for Brother Sister Smith, but he talked to me this morning. He goes, we're at 10 days and we're doing good, so we're almost out of this here thing. So very thankful for that. Looking forward to seeing Brother Smith um, come back and, and tell us more about his travels and more of the experience that he's went through recently and uh, got a lot of people to be on our mind today that won't be with us in service today. Brother Durham, of course, and Brother Jacob are in California, still handling uh, Brother Durham's father's affairs. And um, uh, Sister Sandra York and Brother Jerry York, they're having issues with their, their vehicle, as well as uh, Sister Jerry got hit pretty hard in the mouth last night with a swing, and she's not doing well, so she's, they're staying at home. Um, bless Addie's heart. Addie got uh, touched the uh, burner on the stove and got really burned pretty bad. And they were at the emergency room last night and getting all fixed up. So she is not doing well. So Sister Terry is with her. May or may not be here, but we, I told her, man, we definitely understand. I mean, bless her heart. So <clears throat> different ones to, to continue to lift up in prayer. Um, I'm thankful to be able to be here today. It's been an interesting weekend for my family also with my, my father um, going from routine heart exam test to, I don't know if I'm going to even pronounce this right, but a quintuple, quintuple bypass. So he had to be cooler than everyone else, I guess. Quadruple is what all the cool kids do, but he was like, well, I'm going to one-up him, I guess. I don't know. But he came through that with flying colors and recuperating very well and in great spirits and... Um, Seems like so far in preliminary, he's got a, he's got a new lease on life. Um, I'm not going to spoil some of the things that he'll want to say to different ones, but uh, he definitely is looking at this. It's helped to, to look at life a little differently. So um, I'm a very, very appreciative from the Lord for his hand in uh, our life and his life and, and what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> on my mind lately, I've been... Thinking a lot about some of the things Brother Smith said, obviously, whenever we talk about prophecy and the, the end times, and then knowing, going back to his, uh, or our, our body teaching, our vision on as the church is restored and the white throne judgment coming forth, that there will be an influx of, of God's children into the body of Christ as we know it. And um, <clears throat> thinking about that and about being the light as we've talked about in the last three, four different services and that relationship of, of those people that will be coming this way. And that, but that got my mind thinking a little bit more honestly about faith, about that first step of you know, the gate of faith when we look at the, the tabernacle in the wilderness, the picture there of coming through that gate of faith, of accepting Christ in as your Savior, as embarking on that <clears throat> Christian journey of moving forward, we're, we're going to have the opportunity to help many people with that journey uh, very soon, I believe. You know, it's one of those things where I was thinking about, in thinking about faith, um, <clears throat> the scripture where it says in Acts <clears throat> that God added to the church daily such as should be saved. I think uh, sometimes we can take that scripture out of context, and that's something I've, as an <clears throat> English major, as a from someone who focused in technical in school, you know, context is king. And that's where we in the body of Christ definitely understand, you know, the Bible will answer itself. It's not going to contradict itself. It makes, it makes sense when you keep it in context. When you take scriptures out of context, well, then God ha God's like a chicken. He's got these wings. And, I mean, it's, it's just everything else that you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> but when it says that he adds the church daily such as to be saved, keep that scripture in context of, I mean, the, the day of Pentecost had happened. The church, were, I should say the, the world, according to the Bible, was being turned upside down, or if anything else, being turned right side up because of the great uh, uh, spirit being poured out like it was in the day of Pentecost and the church being moved on and inaugurated in that great way uh, during the early church time. So it's not that everyone was just sitting around and like, oh, look, 
God just added someone else. Someone else just came in the door. Hey, how you doing? You know, there was a great work that was being done there because he uses human instrumentation. And that's where we are today. We, are, we have the opportunity to help others with this walk of faith. And I know it's been said, uh, even in Bible study before, is understanding the difference between the, the terminology used when we say, when someone says, what faith are you? Or, you know, um, they're really referring to, they, they want to know what denomination to, do you align with? What denomination or what, what doctrine, what doct- set of doctrines, what ideology, what dogma do you prescribe to? Well, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about truly having that faith of a grain of a mustard seed, of having that, that, that touch from the Lord as he leads and guides us to faith to faith, to being able to move closer to him, to having that relationship. And uh, so <clears throat> I wrote down some scriptures. These are by no means exhaustive. Faith is a vast subject that touches into every subject into the Bible. And so, you know, I'm sure not going to be able to cover it um, in a 45-minute time span, but just to go over some, <clears throat> so in Hebrews, um, we often talk about the, the chapter of faith, and I'll hit that in a second, but in Hebrews 10 and 19, <clears throat> excuse me, so, and we, we, most scholars, and I know in the body of Christ, we all <clears throat> believe that Paul is the writer of Hebrews. Um, but Paul talking to them as far as saying, so having, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. <clears throat> so, Paul using that, that boy, he is just, that, just those two or three verses right there are just overflowing with that vivid imagery of the, of the temple, of that tabernacle, because he was talking to the Jewish people who it made perfect sense for what he was saying and relating it back to this walk that we're on today. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful as promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And that's the other thing that I'll, I will be bringing in here also. <clears throat> I, have, I have had in my walk times that I have really had to step back and say, okay, I understand that I'm not trying to put a checklist next to things that make me holy because it's not things that make me holy but it's my walk with Christ it's my relationship with him you know it's nothing that I have done if God hadn't even dealt with my heart I wouldn't have known to accept him so it, it is it is on God uh, and to fulfill this walk and to take me down those steps to where I eventually reach that step of perfection but it also as as we'll get to here later as far as there is also a teaching that's really dominant in the religious world that it is you know it, it's by grace alone and there and that's a misinterpretation of well what does that even mean by grace alone you know it's not there's you know we're not saved by works and I'll get to that but we have to keep that in context of when those when those scriptures are related who was the scriptures being who were they talked to who were they focused at so many times it was to the Jewish people and the Jewish people when they knew that works being born a Jew in itself was a, a birthright of saying, I have, the way to, I have the way to God. And so I have this book, the 613 ordinances and laws, and if I follow these things, then I am not only professing myself because I am a Jew by birth, but I am also walking in this tenet, and therefore I am righteous. Well, that's not, that's not where we're at today. We are not trying to bring back the law. I don't know about you, but when I looked through all the different things that they had to do, and well, if they did this sin, they, they bring, bring two turtle doves, okay, over here. Let's bring a fatted calf. Oh, but it better not have a single blemish on it. I mean, that's, that's a little laborious. I mean, I'm like, great, I done messed up again. Now, which one of my animals do I need to sacrifice so I'm good today? 
We're not worrying about that. The Lord isn't wanting to have that type of relationship anymore with mankind where it's based on the sacrifices and bulls of goats. It's about that faith toward Christ, about moving forward in Him. So, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. <clears throat> How applicable is that to us today? To think about this, this world. <clears throat> I mean, is it, it, it's sort of a, um, an overstatement of, you know, at the beginning of the year, I know there was so many, like 2020 just gave us so many different anecdotes to say, right? We're going into 2020 and we'll see more clearly. I mean, you know, I don't mean just biblically or in the body. I'm talking about just like sayings in this world, like people were using it left and right. 2020 is like, oh, cool, we got something neat to say. Well, I don't think anyone saw 2020 coming. Not for what we have dealt with the last 10 months. It has definitely been one for the record books. But in this day, in this hour, there's so much uncertainty in this world. There's so much that we don't even have, an, like, what's going on. But really, if we look at it and we step back, that uncertainty has always been there. We really don't know, but, but mankind gets complacent within their own self because their faith isn't in God. Their faith is in science. Their faith is in, sadly, in politics. I mean, and that's, and if you have faith in politics, well, you know, you definitely have a rocky, rocky time right now or a faith in medical science. Well, they just got thrown for a loop because those are not the things that we should focus on, but we should have our faith in Christ because he's unwavering. So in 2020, it's been a crazy year, but it really hasn't been a crazy year for Christ. He hasn't been caught off guard by any of this. God the Father is quite well aware of his own plan. So there's no, there's no real concern when it comes to that, but it should at the very least help us to focus more on Christ, to make sure that our faith in him is where it needs to be for our own individual walks. And I know I can say, by virtue of experience and, and, and her walk, Sister Crow has been on this journey a few more years than I have been. She's seen a lot more, um, are you 96? Is that right? So just in historical context, we're talking about going back to the end of the Great Depression, uh, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, putting a man on the moon, the, 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 the Berlin Wall going up and the Berlin Wall coming down. She's seen them both. I mean, there's a lot. Now, that's just from a historical perspective. But then you put that in the body of Christ or her walk as far as in faith. There's a lot that she's seen, and today... She's, we, can, we can see her as a pillar. We can see her as someone that has, wa has have, have went through that and hasn't wavered in that relationship with God. I'm not trying to, not just, I'm not trying to puff such a crow up, but I'm trying to utilize that to show this walk of faith that we're on, it's from faith to faith. It's, you know, there may have been times, I know I heard her, and it, it, let me just tell you, Sister Crow, it was very helpful when I heard you had some down times. When I heard about, and I'd love to hear it sometime again, about this particular house that you had, and like there were some huge rats, like they were rats that could have beat down cats, and, and, and you were like, y'all stay on y'all's end, and I'm going to be over here. I mean, you know, that's not something I've had to deal with, thankfully. But at that moment, you, you know, you're pray you got your broom, and you got the Lord, and you're like, Lord, protect me from these, these rats. But there were things that, she went through that journey, and after God took her through that circumstance, she had a little more faith for the next circumstance to come along, and she keeps, continues to grow in that. So just going back to 2020 and, and this, this time of not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, I want to be able to be here and hear the great testimonies of my brothers and sisters to, to help my, my journey to grow forward, to to have that faith continue to build in God to say, no matter what this outside world is going through, in here, in this walk, I'm, I'm steady because I'm continually trusting in God and having that faith in Him. In verse 26, <clears throat> uh, 
For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for, of a judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy, but under two or three witnesses. Of how much more sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing that hath done despite unto the Spirit for grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. So, then coming on down, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. <clears throat> but call to remembrance the former days in which, ye, in which, after you were illuminated, you endured a great flight of afflictions. Some of this might seem like, well, what's this relating back to faith? But this is that walk that I'm talking about. And if you go back to right when he's relating back to Moses <clears throat> and the law and thinking about what, those, what the Jewish people were going through during that time and how they were learning to live under the law and how hard it was to understand or to they they didn't have a lot of mercy there under that law i mean that day that that man picked up the sticks there was no mercy for that man you know if you you know think about whenever the pharisees were trying to to trip up christ and the disciples they didn't wash their hands and they were throwing a fit i mean there were so many different things that they were saying look these are, these are punishable offenses. That's not what we're living under today. But what he's trying to say is, look, if there was so much condemnation for those people under the law, how much more for our Heavenly Father, our sacrifice of Christ, that that's so much more of a sacrifice that's been giving. And if we're not following his, this faith, if we're not walking in his way and understanding that this is serious, we don't need to forsake this, the, ourselves assembling together. This is important. This is the most important work being done in the earth today. People are banking on <clears throat> both sides that in November that things are going to get better. I mean, you know, obviously there's a lot of us that have said this just offhandedly and some in jest, but with a little bit of hope to it that, well, you know, after the election, COVID's probably going to go away. You know, that's that's a very political statement. We, we, we're hoping that because we, we're hoping that some of that is truly brought on. It's just over-exaggerated. But our faith isn't in November. Our faith is not, well, whoever gets in, in to be president, that's going to make everything better. It, it's not. That's not our administration. That's not our focus. That's not going to help our faith. It, it can tell us a little bit more about the time, but it's not going to be that faith builder in relation to, well... Thank, bless the Lord. I mean, some people may bless the Lord, depending upon which way it goes. But that's not our focus today. Our focus is on our walk with Him. Our focus is on, on building that faith out. So he says here, <clears throat> partly whilst, yeah, this is verse 33, partly whilst you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and, and partly whilst you became companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds, and took joyfully in spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence with confidence, which has great recompense for reward. For ye need, for we have need of patience, that after we have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back by my soul, or my soul shall have no pleasure in him. <clears throat> Paul going once again back in and, and showing we have to continue to tarry. We have to continue to move forward. And the Bible saying the just shall live by faith. So we know we are, we are counted righteous in this walk today. As we continue to walk in faith. God covers us right now until we move into a brighter light, until that sevenfold light comes forth. The just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure. So we have to continue on in this journey, no matter the circumstances. You know, um, and for each one of us, that circumstance is different. You know, for, for someone in elementary school, it may be trying to pass that test. But for... Someone in college, they're looking at trying to get that degree and move on to the next step in life. 
or they're expecting another child and going, wow, we're going to have one more mouth to feed. I hope that job continues to be there. But it's by faith that we have that walk with God that no matter what the circumstance, he is going to see us through. We're going to have that relationship with him. So a, a lot of that, I read that there because I was saying about context is king. You know, we know this in this church <clears throat> that <clears throat> a lot of the commas and, the, and the, the, the chapters, the way our Bible is set up was not how it was written as far as laid down for the Jewish people. The, the chapters and breaks were put in years and years later when it was translated. Well, so this all goes together right here. It flows. And going into that hall of faith that we talk about in chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Through fa uh, uh, for, for by it the elders obtained a good report talking about those, or referring to those that he's about to go through and mention in this hall of faith that he goes through, starting, he actually starts even before Abel in our own faith, talking about creation. But relating to us, once again, that, that walk of faith. But what's beautiful at the end of this chapter is he, he relates that faith into that, that earnest of our inheritance to the Holy Ghost. What those that died in faith, what they had not received yet. So, however, we, we have that opportunity here today. We have had that message come across about faith and about having that walk with Christ and about moving on from faith into receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. As it says here, is a substance of things hoped for. We don't actually have to hope for that day of the Holy Ghost being given. We, that day has happened and we have that. Holy Ghost today. So there, So in that, we're not having to have a faith in relation to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If, if I've received it, I'm no longer hoping for it. I now have received that blessing and I'm moving forward in that next step. Now that doesn't mean I've done away with faith as a whole, but faith in that particular journey right there, I'm having faith that one day that if I've given my life to God and I'm continually trying to walk in Him and follow His ministry, that he's going to take me on into the truth and one day reach perfection. I haven't attained into that yet. Sister Tally, I, I, I often, I, I reset my three-year calendar and I keep having to reset it. So I'm hoping that one of these days that that will be a, a, I will no longer have to have faith in that, but I'll be able to say like Paul. And I'll be able to say I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Henceforth is a crown before me. Um, and let me I'm just going to throw this little deal in here. Just... Um, I'm, I'm a sharer, okay? That's how I am. I'm an account manager. You have to build relationships. So in order to do that, you have to share things. Um, I'm trying to stay in teacher mode and go through this because it's a Bible study. But for me, because I know where my, my, where my gift lies, I start to get in preacher mode and move out of teaching and go into that. So please forgive me for that. I, I'm trying to like, okay... So let me calm back down and go back to the scriptures. So, um, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So here he talks to us about that. <clears throat> I mean, when you think about the vastness of God, of just, and ju when you say the word just, <laughs> just creation, think about creation. How vast just or or how about the human body and its systems and how it all works together it's it's amazing and if we would just look at that it should be a faith builder because <clears throat> to i mean i believe i have faith but i would if i have an opportunity i'm not going to definitely try to throw the gauntlet down and and um go against some atheist or something of that nature but I would love to congratulate them and say, I really would like to understand where you get all that faith from because that's an enormous amount of faith to believe that this just all happened by accident. I mean, to believe that the entire universe and the way the earth is just set in its perfect orbit and all of the, the life and, and, and our, the knowledge that the mankind's attained, just to believe all that was an accident, that's a lot of faith. I mean, I'm like, wow, if I could have that kind of faith, man, I probably could, like, walk on water right now. But we're growing in our faith, right? But 
I'm not trying to be facetious about that, but I am trying to say, <clears throat> when we think about the vastness of creation, as Paul's relating right there, it helps us to grow in that faith of God, I, I don't understand that. And I don't understand on, sometimes on a monthly or weekly or yearly basis what's next. You know, I have a plan. I have a thought process. But there are some times that I have to say, God, it's in your hands. My father going into the hospital, I had to, I mean, I truly had nothing I could do about that. I'm not a doctor. I can't, we don't have that flowing gift, we'll say, or that truly the gift of healings in the way they did in the Old Testament. I can't go, or, or in, the, in the New Testament, I can't just go lay hands on my father and heal him. <clears throat> I have to sit down and say, God, it's, it's up to you. It's up to you. you. He's your child. He's in your hands. By faith, I'm believing, Lord. I'm hoping for that. I don't have to hope today because God in his mercy took my father through that circumstance and now his heart is on the mend. So I have now one more time, I have to call that into remembrance and go, I can now think, God, remember what you did for my dad. I remember when you lifted him off of that hospital dead, bed. And so those are things that help to build our faith, those landmarks that we go back to. And we say, you know what? Yes, that's a mighty problem out in front of us. Yes, I don't see the answer. But God has taken me through these journeys before. And with faith, I will, I will, he'll see me through. Sometimes we have to have that faith of the three Hebrew boys. <clears throat> when they were about to be thrown in the fiery furnace. When the king gives them that, um, that opportunity. Now listen, I'm going to give you one more chance. Bow down or I'm throwing you in there. And they said, you know what? Sorry, king. We're not even going to be careful for answering you on this one. But our God is able to deliver us. But they didn't stop there. But they said, but even if he doesn't, I'm not bowing down. So they were admitting they were, they were, they were working in faith right then. So see, I want to I just pause right there. That was an action. That was a true work. Okay, by saying that to the king, by, that was a profession. Let me say it that way. It was a profession of their faith saying, we believe our God is able to, to overcome this situation for us, to save us out of this. They, that was, that was a, a, a use of their faith right there. They were walking in that faith right there. They were doing something. They were, their, their fruits were being shown, even though they weren't for sure that, well, but if he doesn't, if it's not in his wisdom to do this, then that's okay. That's up to God. And that's a very, I mean, we can read through it, and I can try to apply those principles in my life, but sometimes it's a very challenging time whenever you have to say, because I mean, you know, I, I don't know about the rest of you. I, sometimes I'm like, all right, Lord, I know you have a plan, but since you haven't shared that whole plan with me, and I have plans too, I just don't know if ours align. And since I know you're God, yours are going to happen. So help me, though, at least to accept your plan if it's not what I would like it to be. And that's, and that's sometimes that's a challenge, but that's our walk in him. That's, that's walking by faith knowing that whether or not he answers that prayer. And, and, and here's the thing. He answers every prayer. It just may not be the answer that I particularly want. <clears throat> so, so if Paul talks about um, the universe being framed and then talks about by faith Abel. And I'm not going to go through every one of these, but he talks about Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham. I mean, each one of these, but in, in uh, <clears throat> verse 6, he says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
to diligently seek the Lord. So my faith, I can say I believe that or, or, you know, if you want to say what faith you are, I can say, well, I'm a Christian. Yes, I profess my Christianity. But if my life shows otherwise, then I'm not really, I'm not really, I'm, be, I'm believing there's a God, but that's about where I got to. I'm not really diligently seeking Him. And I'm not trying to apply myself. What does Christ say? <clears throat> he says, uh, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. It's not about the, the, the wish list or the, or the list to knock off, but it's about those fruit coming forth. It's about, it's about that day when they were tested. They, that's just it. They, there was a work right there. They said, I'm, whether or not he saves us, you can throw us in. Whether or not I'm going to move that way. Because they had a choice right then. They could have chose to say, you know, King, I appreciate that second opportunity. I think we'll take you up on that. I'm not really feeling like being a toasted marshmallow today. But they didn't do that. They said, you know what? No matter what, throw us in the fire. We'll go, we'll, you know, we'll, we're going to put it in the hands of our God. And they were delivered out of that situation. So, so understanding, though, that faith, faith and grace do work together. <clears throat> They're not contrary to one another. That grace that we have, but God giveth grace unto the humble. You know, I know Brother Linger used to teach it that it was his uh, um, un- unmerited favor. But that there, it, but there was conditions as far as you, you could do certain things. I mean, if you want to count the air, the oxygen we breathe, everything that God creates, I had nothing to do with it. That is God's grace that I'm alive. But I can get in the way of God's grace if I go and I run out in front of a semi-truck and I end that grace for me. So I have a part to play in that. So I've got to be aware of what, what I'm doing. I don't want to get in the way of God. <clears throat> so <clears throat> he goes on into Noah. And after he talks about Sarah and Abraham, in verse 12, Therefore sprang there even of one, <clears throat> and him as good as dead. So many as the stars of the sky in multitude, as the sand which is by the sea shore innumerable. Speaking of that about... Um, the promise that God gave to Abraham about having children that would number the sand of the sea and the, and the, and the stars of the sky. But even out there, I wanted, to, I wanted to, to, to take a pause as far as <clears throat> with Abraham and Sarah. That's that opportunity we once again see. I love, I mean, obviously, Paul had an, a, a reason why he chose. I mean, there's so many people we could have talked about why he chose these different ones. <clears throat> God said, Abraham, I will make a mighty nation out of you. And it will be this way. And, and they chose, though, to say, well, I'm going to help God. We'll, I, I, we need a son, and, and it, ain't, it ain't happening, so, hey, we'll go this route. And we know that didn't really work out very well. And what's come from it today. Now, it's all worked in God's plan. God, God didn't let it mess his plan up. But it sure didn't work out the way Abraham intended. So I want to make sure that I'm having my eyes open to not trying to help God in that way. Like, all right, God, well, you're a little slow for me, so I'm going to go ahead and do this because you'll end up with an Ishmael. And that's not what we want to do. We want to have that faith to know that God, the one that said he'll perform it, he's able to, fi- he's able to start it and finish the work. So I want to have my heart open and pure and, and clear and say, God, I want to have my, my heart attuned to him, my ears to hear and my eyes to see. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Now, I'm trying to to read here and not preach because this gets me excited, okay? And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offer up Isaac. And then it starts going back into Isaac. And then Isaac accepting the promise. And then Jacob and Joseph and Moses. Going on down to <clears throat> verse 32. 
And what shall I say more? Uh, and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David, Samuel, and of the prophets. And starts going through who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. The reason I was trying to get all this, and I'm like I said, I'm going to go nowhere near where I had here, <clears throat> um, is understanding the relationship of faith and works, that it's not works of the law. When it's relating to works, it's of the law. Once again, though, we don't want to create a new law. We don't want to say, well, you have to fast three times a day. You have to pray four times a day. You've got to, if you don't wear um, a polka dot shirt with a striped tie, well, then thou shalt not enter the kingdom of heaven. We're not trying to create new laws. Christ did away with the law. He gave us a better way. But, we have to also understand that I, I want to, as my understanding and my faith continues to grow, then there should be some fruit coming from that. And I think that's what later on, what James relates back to us in relation to, you show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. It's not the works that create the faith, but it's when you're truly living by that faith. I mean, you know, I love, honestly, I mean, I don't know, I don't think James was sarcastic, but maybe just because of my nature, Brother Painter, when I read it, it's, it, it makes me laugh when he starts to talk about and say, you know, if someone came to your house and they were hungry and you said, hey, I'll pray for you, be thou filled. I mean, that, that really does make me laugh because I mean, it's like, yeah, that would, that's, a, that's pretty rude. I mean, it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll pray for you. You're hungry. You know, now we understand that context, you know, but the thing is, it is help them. If you've been given the opportunity to be in that circumstance to, to feed your brother, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's with food, but it's, it's that opportunity, then go ahead and help them because you then were that cause for their faith to grow. You were that help to help them to move one more step as that faith grows to faith. So it says uh, in 35... Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. All these, just going through here, just helping us to remember that these Old Testament worthies were living by faith. And they didn't have that blessed gift of the Holy Ghost. As it says here, <clears throat> And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, Receive not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Think about that. that now, I, I want to kick that, and it's one thing to see that he was talking to these of old about what happened here, but I want to apply it today. We, we, I have that opportunity. I was given the gift of the Holy Ghost, the earnest of my inheritance, to now move even stronger in that faith. You know, like I said, I'm not hoping for that day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost happened, and we've had, a, you know, 2,000 years from that time to now have that Holy Ghost down inside and to have, it, it have its perfect work and to help my faith grow. As Paul said back here about, you know, to, when we've learned, when we've been illuminated, when we receive that blessed Holy Ghost and those truths as Brother Smith and the different ones that have been behind just this pulpit in Little Rock. I mean, we have been a very blessed church to think about the many ministers' meetings that we've had here. From Brother James Souders to Brother Patton to Brother Insel Edmonds to uh, Brother Whitlow to Brother Molino, Brother Eckleberry, you know, Brother um, Cornelius Mears, Brother Revy Mears. We have been a blessed assembly here in Little Rock to have heard these wonderful words of God coming across and having that gift of the Holy Ghost, letting them take root and help us to build in our faith more. Um, so I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to go to one other scripture. That way I would just be right here in Hebrews. Um, Ephesians 2, <clears throat> uh, fourth, uh, let's see, yeah, Ephesians 2. Uh, 
and 4. <clears throat> Once again, context. That's why... Um, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, <clears throat> even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. That verse right there today, uh, that in the ages to come, you know, that's talking about us. We're, I mean, think about when this was written, all right? You know, it's written by Paul, so it's before 65 A.D., and the ages to come. That's, that's, that's a scripture that was right there for us. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So see, if, if you just take those verses right there, um, in, in re, I'll just, re, religion, I'm not going to point any particular denomination out, but when they talk about grace, grace, they're, they're not relating it to the whole package right there. He just said, if you just read that one verse, it says, well, you know, you're not, for by grace are you saved, I'm sorry, um, not, okay, just nine, not of works lest any man should boast. You're saved by grace. But if you read this entire thing together, you understand, once again, who is he talking about? He's also centering on, so this is to the Ephesian church, a Gentile church. But there was so much trouble with the Jews trying to come in and put the, the Gentiles back under the bondage of the law. Later on in some other uh, scriptures, Paul relates to them saying how he withstood Peter and said, No, no, it, we, we're not trying to, if, if you are saved by grace and through Christ, why are you trying to put them back under the law? That's not what we're trying to do. It's not about the law. It's not about those works of circumcision. Those works of taste not, handle not, touch not. That's not what saves you. But it's by, through grace and Christ Jesus and the gift of the Holy Ghost and moving into, into that perfection. So there was more to it here. But it says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God before ordained that we should walk in them. It's through that walk of faith that we are having those fruits come forth so that we can get closer to Christ. Um, I'm gonna, I'll just give you a couple of these. Matthew 21, it's talking about the faith. Uh, where it's the, that's where Christ is talking about the fig tree. <clears throat> In um, Romans 8, 28, you can say, well, well, that doesn't say anything about faith. But if you think about that scripture, all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and are thee called according to his purpose. That's exuding faith in that scripture right there, understanding what we talked about earlier, that whether or not it's good, whether or not I'm happy, or the, the, the prayer that I asked for God to answer, and I wanted it one way, if it didn't happen that way, all things work together for the good. It's just, it's for my salvation. Ultimately, that's the good we're talking about. It's if I'm saved... It, it, the road that I go down may be a rough road, but if the, at the end of the journey I am there at, at, with Christ, then it's, it's all worth it. Whatever the journey, it's all worth it. Once we see Christ and we have that opportunity, not only to rule and reign for a thousand years, but beyond into the ceaseless ages. And I think we talk about the thousand years because at least that's something we can grasp because ceaseless ages, I mean, I can't even grasp the thousand years. But ceaseless ages, that really goes on beyond there. Um, you can also, so in Galatians 5, 22, you talk about the fruit of the Spirit. Um, Romans 1 and 17, the just shall live by faith. It's mentioned again. <clears throat> um, Romans 14 and 23. And then uh, uh, Romans 10, 6 through 17. And the scripture, actually, all those references that Paul makes come from Habakkuk 2 and 4 where the just shall live by faith, that's where it's pulled from. So today, and once again, I, was, I promise I was going to actually relate that also getting back into us um, all having the opportunity to show by our faith to those that are out there that don't have a hope right now. 
that are very much confused because they're caught up in the gods of this world, whether it be political, whether it be the, the stock market, whatever, whatever it be, that's their focus today. But showing them that there's a better way and just throwing a little bit of that bait out there and saying, hey, come to 8101 Colonel Glenn. I promise you, you've never been in a service like you would be in if you come and just visit us there. Try it. Just try it. And then we have that opportunity. I mean, who doesn't like to get excited about a new baby, right? A new baby coming in the church, someone coming in and being hungry to hear these things. And everything that we've heard will be brand new to them. And that newness, it'll excite us as well. So thank you for your attention. I appreciate that very much. I uh, look forward to going upstairs and, and seeing what God has for us today. And um, we'll continue to walk by faith.